So let's suppose that we begin with one kilogram block of ice at negative 50 degrees Celsius. And we take that block of ice and we place it over a heat source, let's say over a flame. Now what will begin to take place? Well, energy will begin to flow from the flame into the ice. And that energy will go into increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules found within the block of ice. And because kinetic energy is related to temperature by the following formula, as the molecules gain more kinetic energy, they will vibrate more violently, and that means collectively, the overall temperature will also begin to increase. So as we take the block of ice and place it over the flame, the temperature will begin to increase until it reaches zero degrees Celsius. Once the ice reaches zero degrees Celsius, now the energy that is coming from the flame is no longer going into increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules. Now the energy is going into breaking the intermolecular bonds between neighboring molecules found within the block of ice. And that's exactly why melting will take place. So melting is the process by which a phase change takes place. The solid state begins to transform into the liquid state. And because all the energy goes into breaking the intermolecular bonds and not increasing the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy remains constant. And that means the temperature will remain constant until all the ice has completely melted into liquid water. Now, let's define something known as heat of fusion. Now, heat of fusion is simply the quantity of energy that is required to melt one kilogram of a substance from solid to liquid. Now, for the case of water, we require 333 kilojoules of energy to melt one kilogram block of ice. So let's suppose that we have melted all the ice into liquid water. What takes place next? Well, once all the ice melts into liquid water, the energy will once again go into increasing the kinetic energy of the water molecules. So the water molecules will vibrate and move more quickly. And that means the temperature will once again increase because the kinetic energy of the molecules is increasing. Now, this will continue to take place until it reaches a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. At 100 degrees Celsius, once again, the energy coming from the flame no longer goes into increasing the kinetic energy, but rather it goes into breaking the intermolecular bonds now between liquid water molecules. And because the kinetic energy remains constant, the temperature also remains constant until all the intermolecular bonds have been broken. Now, notice the following important distinction. The covalent bonds that hold the individual atoms within the molecules are not actually being broken. These bonds are not being broken. The bonds that are being broken are the intermolecular bonds between neighboring or adjacent water molecules as shown by these green arrow, these green lines, dashed lines. Now, these bonds are formed as a result of the interaction between the H atom on one molecule and the oxygen atom on a different molecule, as shown by the following diagram. Now, in the same way that we define the heat of fusion, the energy that is required to melt something, the heat of vaporization is the quantity of energy required to vaporize one kilogram of substance from the liquid state to the gas state and for water it's 2260 kilojoules per kilogram. 
So, it takes this many joules of energy to melt or to transform one kilogram of water from liquid to the gas state. Now, these two concepts, the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization, are collectively referred to as the latent heat. And if we want to determine the amount of energy that is required to melt something or to vaporize something, we have to use this formula. The energy given by Q is equal to the product of the mass of our substance and L, where L refers to the latent heat. Now, L could be either the heat of fusion or the heat of vaporization. It depends on which one we're referring to. If we're in this case, we have to use the heat of fusion. If we're in this case, we have to use the heat of vaporization. Now, notice when we go from the solid state to the liquid state or from the liquid state to the gas state, we have to input energy to break those intermolecular bonds. On the other hand, when we go from the gas state to the liquid state or from the liquid state to the solid state, energy is released. So, intermolecular bonds are formed and that releases energy.